Big news today, hot on the heels of one of the most impressively weak launches in recent history. Thanks, Steve. Ow, my knees. Is AMD's return to consumer class high-end desktop, or HEDT, processors. So this is Ryzen 7000 Threadripper. It's due out on November 21st. And for enthusiasts who remember the Intel X series days, like X99, 299, and so forth, and AMD's original Threadripper lineups, uh, this should be exciting news, assuming it, it works out well. And we'll be testing them to determine if that's the case, because there really hasn't been an HEDT lineup from either of these companies for prosumer, consumer class users outside of the Ryzen 5000 Threadripper Pro series, which isn't really the same thing. So AMD is bringing the HEDT desktop back. It's not just pro-branded workstation. AMD told us that it previously thought it could cover the consumer market with a single platform, but AMD got a lot of feedback from some of those consumers and definitely from a lot of reviewers. We actually abandoned Threadripper when it didn't get carried forward outside of the pro lineup because the pro lineup was just too expensive uh, and it didn't make sense for us for our workstations anymore. Uh, so AMD said, quote, we heard you, we're bringing it back. It's as simple as that. That's directed to the consumers. So uh, they're launching two brand new classes of CPU with a new socket to run them. There'll be two chipsets, some interesting characteristics with motherboard compatibility. They'll have more cores, higher clock than previous threader for parts. The IO capabilities remain high, uh, and that's been kind of the selling point for the especially Threader for Pro series of CPUs previously. There's been lots of I.O. attached to the CPU. Uh, additionally, they'll be unlocked for overclocking. So we're hoping to do some OC on the new Threader for parts. We'd really like to get into it with liquid nitrogen again. And uh, we've sent out an email to AMD asking if we can work with their overclocking team to do some educational content around that. But of course, we have to get through the reviews first. Uh, and see how they perform if they're any good. AMD also announced pricing for this last minute. So the range is $1,500 to $5,000 for the non-pro CPUs. Before that, this video is brought to you by Lee and Lee and the O11D Evo XL. The O11D Evo XL builds upon the long-standing strengths of the O11D series by adding new features like a rotated GPU layout to showcase the most important part of a build. The Evo XL also uses a removable motherboard tray that can adjust for different heights, making it tunable for every style. Additionally, these cases use Lee and Lee's compartmentalized approach to design to keep cables cleanly hidden behind the back of the case. Learn more at the link in the description below. All right, getting into the specs, a quick note here first. AMD, as is classic for AMD in its presentations to press, uh, who then disseminate the information to millions of people across all of the channels, sent out conflicting slides. So AMD had an error in its slides. A couple of them were conflicting for the specifications for at least one of the CPUs. If you see media with different numbers today, that's why uh, we contacted AMD and they provided us the correct version of the slides and, uh, and basically said, oops, sorry. So then let's get into the specs. Despite the return of the non-pro Threadripper being exciting, we'll start with the Pro 7000WX series. There are nine new CPUs to look at in total. Six of them are in the Pro lineup. And these Pro CPUs we're viewing as sort of the basis because they feature the, the full feature set and then it gets stripped down as you go to the non-pro lineup. The top SKU is the 7995WX with 96 Zen 4 cores and 192 threads running up to 5.1 gigahertz boost and 2.5 gigahertz base clock. Cache is up as well with the 7995WX getting 384 megabytes of L3, which is more than the 256 megabytes on the Threadripper Pro 5000 series top of the line CPU. It's also enough cache where you could run old games probably entirely in cache if they were written to do so. Still though, this high cache is way below the amount of the Epic 3D vCache server CPUs where uh, some of those feature 768 megabytes of cache. The switch to Zen 4 also doubles the amount of L2 cache from 512 kilobytes to one megabyte per core on the new thread for CPUs. Down from the 96 core CPU, the rest of the Pro line has CPUs at core counts of 64, 32, 24, 16, all the way down to 12. The 12 core is the 7945WX, which boosts to 5.3 gigahertz and has a base of 4.7 gigahertz for the clock. Now, these 12 cores in Threadripper are always kind of bizarrely low considering there's desktop CPUs from AMD that are also 12 cores, even more than that. In the case of the 7950X, you're at 16. Uh, typically, at least the way we view it, the reason these exist is for especially workstation-focused users 
who really need the I.O. capabilities but don't want uh, or maybe have issues with in some of their applications, the high core count CPUs. So if they're just attaching a ton of devices like drives or network cards or whatever, uh, then that might be the reason you would have one of those lower CPU count versions of Threadripper. Speaking of that, though, the Pro CPUs all have 128 lanes of PCIe support. Uh, that's Gen 5 connectivity, and that's straight from the CPU. So that's enough for up to eight 16-lane PCIe devices. There's also 16 more lanes off of the new WRX90 chipset. These, however, are at lower speed. They'll also support eight channels of DDR5 5200R DIMMs for up to two terabytes of RAM at a theoretical 266 gigabytes per second peak bandwidth, according to AMD. Memory overclocking is also technically supported, but good luck getting stability on two terabytes of RAM uh, with any kind of big overclock, or at least have fun waiting for the memory training. Uh, you might want to go do some errands while it tries to boot up. The TDP is 350 watts for the entirety of the new lineup, and there's no derating on power budget for the lower end SKUs here. So one of the things AMD told us was that uh, part of its reasoning for moving to a new platform, other than they never really supported the old ones fully anyway, uh, as they had planned, but they told us that uh, more power draw and uh, better voltage regulation was a large aspect of moving to the new STR5 platform and socket. But they also noted that these should be the most power efficient Threadrippers so far. That doesn't make them low power. Uh, they're just saying they do more work for the amount of power consumed. These, like the previous generations of Pro CPUs before them, are aimed at businesses and enterprise workstations. So that would be where you want additional security or management features, things that would be interesting to large companies like Dell or HP or whatever, enterprise companies. Uh, now we can get into the fun stuff for the enthusiasts in our audience, though. Hopefully these CPUs work out well and perform well, because we would like to work on Threadripper again. It's been a while. So the 7,000 non-pro CPUs will be shipping with three variants, and uh, these make up the consumer end of HEDT. The top of the stack is the 7980X with 68 cores and 128 threads. It is advertised to boost to 5.1 gigahertz, and it has 256 megabytes of L3 cache. Down from that is the 7970X with 32 cores, slightly higher boost clocks, and a much higher 4 gigahertz base clock. L3 cache is cut in half though, down to 128 megabytes. There's also a 7960X, which is mostly the same thing, but with 24 cores and obviously the changes that accompany the core count change. Interestingly, that's a higher core count than the two lowest core count Threadripper Pro CPUs, uh, which again makes sense if AMD suspects that Pro users might exist in a camp that wants only the I.O. and the PCIe capabilities, doesn't want the cores. PCIe lanes on the non-Pro are cut down versus the Pro with only 48 Gen 5 lanes off of the CPU and 88 total on the new TRX50 HEDT platform. Memory support is cut down as well, dropping to four channels, but keeping support for error correcting R DIMMs. Like the Pro CPUs, all the non-Pros have the same 350 watt TDP. Unlike the Pro, they don't have the same business oriented security management features. Those are unlikely to be important to an individual or a small business. And now moving on to the I.O. capabilities, this is kind of interesting. So Threadripper 7000 will support splitting up any group of 16 PCIe lanes uh, to up to nine devices. So an example might be one device at by eight and then eight more by one devices using those total 16 lanes. And uh, this would be accomplished via special add-in cards or maybe via motherboards that have uh, special capabilities sort of attached to them. Internally to the CPU package itself, AMD had to rework both the IO die and the die to die interconnects to allow for up to 12 CCDs, which is what's enabling the higher overall core counts this generation. The central IO die is flanked by two banks of three CCDs on each side, making it a complex package overall. The IO die has a built in SATA controller that allows for up to 32 lanes of SATA connectivity straight to the CPU, which is also an interesting feature. The 12 CCD layout only applies to the Pro parts for now, and the non-Pro ones get eight CCDs arranged in a very similar but slightly different physical layout. This indicates that the substrates differ between the lineups. Unfortunately, we don't have motherboards to look at yet, or really anything officially announced to talk about at the time we're filming this, uh, but we have some information on the chipsets that'll be used on all of those motherboards. So WRX90 is going to be the platform for the Pro CPUs, and then for the enthusiast HEDT CPUs, that one is going to be TRX50. 
Interestingly though, TRX50 boards will technically be able to support Threadripper Pro CPUs and Threadripper non-pro CPUs. So you'll have uh, two options for CPU family on the consumer class board. But as we understand it right now, the professional class board will only support Threadripper Pro. So <laughs> he's letting you have your cake and eat half of it or, or something. And that means it would be possible to run the 96 core 7995WX in the TRX50 board. AMD actually tried to make this sort of a one more thing moment, but by the time the slide came up, AMD had already mentioned it once, so it didn't really land. The awkwardness didn't really improve from there because right after that, the next slide had the potentially ominous statement, quote, your time is valuable, don't waste it, end quote. I'm choosing to interpret that as a comment on having just spent a week reviewing 14 series CPUs, but they probably didn't mean it that way. Anyway, we have reservations about the practicality of using a TRX50 consumer board for a pro series thread over CPU. There aren't a lot of cases where that makes sense. The amount of money for a pro definitely is going to be way higher than non-pro. When you're invested that deep into a CPU, cutting back on the motherboard to potentially lose features, it's kind of an odd thing to do. Now, there probably are one-off use cases for it. It's good to support it. It's just that as a consumer, you need to understand uh, that there are some compatibilities there to consider and which chipset or board is best suited to your CPU. This diagram shows the huge amount of connectivity possible with the WX series and the WX90 chipset. There's even audio straight off of the CPU. And they also shared this side-by-side -side view of the block diagrams for the connectivity of the CPUs themselves. It illustrates the disabled memory channels and the lanes. It's not very intuitive, but if you pause and look at it, it should help out. Now for performance. So AMD, of course, shared some of its first-party performance claims and expectations. We don't normally get into these too much or talk about them a whole lot because we'll have our own numbers, but just to sort of set the, the expectation what AMD's marketing expects it will achieve, we will go over some of the basic numbers here. And then we'll be able to use these later when we review the CPUs to just make sure everything went as planned. The chart for the Pro CPUs had each one as relative performance to a different Intel part. So it's pretty hard to draw meaningful conclusions from aspects of this. However, the slide for the HEDT 7980X is easier to deal with. Comparisons here are between AMD's new 64 core and Intel's 56 core W93495X. AMD claims between 4% and 94% better performance, depending on the application being benchmarked. That's quite the range. And otherwise, we'll come back to the performance once we have our own numbers. Now for cooler support, this is something that we emailed AMD to ask for clarity on. AMD noted that it's working on a compatibility list right now that it's going to publish for prior coolers and which ones, if any, will work on the new Threadripper platforms. Our understanding, speaking sort of off record with some sources, is that some of the coolers should maintain compatibility and specifically some of the AIO adapter plates should remain compatible. That's not official right now. It's something that AMD is looking at. We've spoken with some cooler manufacturers and uh, that may be the case, but everyone's kind of waiting to, to see. The biggest concern will be leveraging the full IHS of Threadripper. So there is an advantage to getting a large cooler contact patch like that knock to a Threadripper cooler that came out originally to actually make contact to the whole IHS. But if you're using something that's smaller than the IHS, like an Asetek cooler, for example, then the, the new issue will be aligning that cold plate as centrally as possible on wherever the new hotspots are. So moving around the dies is going to shift the needs of where the cooler kind of sits on that IHS, depending on what part of the chip is the hottest. Okay, pricing and availability. So all of these CPUs on their motherboards should be available for retail sale November 21st. There's no period of exclusivity for large OEMs this time, like Lenovo or Dell. That was something that was really strange about the Threadripper 5000 Pro launch. This time, it should be going out to everyone on the same day. Pricing for the non-pro HEDT chips is steep. AMD's Threadripper 7980X, or 64 cores, is $5,000. The 7970X is 32 cores, that one is $2,500 and the 7960X is $1,500. That one's 24 cores, and all of these are with SMT. That's higher than the last time AMD had non-pro Threadripper in the 3000 series, especially at the high end. The new 64 core is $1,000 more, the 32 core went up by $500, and the 24 core is up by $100. That's going to put these CPUs out of reach of most regular consumers and most enthusiasts.
For reference, the 3990X, previously 64 cores, that was $3,990. The 3970X was two grand, and then the 3960X was $1,400. Threader Pro 7000 will be in both Pro and HDT consumer class versions. Just to recap everything, it's going to be two chipsets, WX90, TRX50. Motherboard support is uh, interesting, so TRX50 will do both. WX90 should only do one. And then up to 96 cores on Pro, 64 on HEDT. There is N4 cores. The clocks uh, depend on the CPU. We're seeing 5 gigahertz plus numbers in some cases. And then up to 12 CCDs for these Zen 4 uh, designs for the new thread over CPUs. Then overclocking is open on both the CPUs uh, and on both of the motherboards, the classes of them. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you think. And we're hoping to review these as soon as we can. So check back for that. But we have plenty more coming up in the meantime as we are just getting started revamping our entire cooler and case testing suite, which we haven't done in years. So really looking forward to that. That'll be on the channel soon. Subscribe for it. Otherwise, go to store.gamersaccess.net or patreon.com slash gamersaccess to help us out directly. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time.